Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Hidden Rainbows Art. My name's Ashley and I make weekly art videos here on YouTube. So this week I wanted to do a video on how to prepare for Artist Alley. This is a question that I get asked quite a lot and I thought rather than just answering the same questions over and over, I would just make a video for you guys. So this advice is coming from someone who has been doing expos for about three years now. Um, I've done quite a lot of expos by now. Actually, it's been four years. And uh, yeah, this year I did nine expos. So um, yeah, I just wanted to share with you some of the stuff that I have learned. I am by no means an expert on the subject, but I have learned a lot of things and I've learned a lot of tips. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. Yeah, girl. So this is going to be part of a two-part series, and uh, so this one is about how to prepare for Artist Alley, and the next one is going to be about what to do when you're there. So this first part of the video is just for first-timers. Uh, if you have sold at an expo before, I still have lots of uh, things I can share with you, but I will just leave the time here for you to skip ahead. All right, so I got lots of stuff to go over. Uh, let's get started. So number one is to make sh no, that's not number one. All right, so number one is to research the event. Uh, wait, isn't that what you're here for? So you want to make sure that this event is worth your time. Uh, do some research on it. Uh, look into how many attendees it gets. Check out some pictures online and look into the rules to make sure that they line up with the types of products that you're going to be selling. So number two is to sign up for the event. Now this may be obvious to some of you. Yeah, that's super obvious but uh, some of you might not know that these expos and comic cons have quite a long waiting list generally, um, especially the longer events. Uh, they can have a wait list of one to three years and some of the really big expos are even longer than that. A what? So I would recommend trying to sell at a smaller convention before you do a large one. And that is because you learn so much in that first convention like no matter how many hours you've planned for this event, there's still going to be a bunch of problems that arise as you set up your booth and as you are selling to customers. So it's best to get that learning curve out of the way at a smaller convention rather than like, well, there's millions of people all around you. So number three is to attend a convention as a guest. So this is just... So you know what to expect. Uh, while you're there, just research like crazy, go to some of the booths, talk to the artists. Wait, talk to other artists? I can't do that. Get an idea of what kind of prices everything is, what kind of products they're selling. Also take pictures of some of the booth setups that you like so that you can reference them later. So just soak in all the amazingness that is convention. Uh, let that inspire you and take that with you while you are preparing for your own convention. Yeah! So this next part is just some advice from me. So make sure you are going into this to have fun first and that it's not just to make money because honestly, you're not gonna make a lot of money right out the gate. Wait, what? This is going to be a long process and you probably are not going to make that much money in your first couple years. It's really easy to look at the artist next to you and see how successful they are and to get jealous of them, but, but look how cool they are. You have no idea how far they are in their art journey. Uh, chances are they've been doing this for at least a few years. And um, so that means they've ironed out all the kinks. They know what stuff sells for them. Uh, they've developed a fan base. My point is that we are all in different stages of our artistic journey and we're stronger as a community than we are alone. And I really do think there is something to selling at an expo because you are able to make your own art, make a living at creating your own artwork. Like that is like the biggest dream for most artists, I think. So even though it is really difficult when you're getting started, 
it is so worth it. There are a ton of artists that are making a killing at these expos, and as long as you're willing to put in the work, you could be too. Yeah! All right, so number four is what to sell. You wanna make sure you have a variety of items, not just prints. Try to have something that is unique and not everyone has. So I will just insert a clip of some of the things that I sell at expos. So these are my pillowcases. I've just laid everything out to show you. Uh, these are my pillowcases. They're very soft. The fabric is called velveteen. And yeah, so they're just black on the back. They have a zipper here. And this is what it looks like filled. So, yeah, black on the back. I usually try to bring stuffing with me to all the events, so I just bring bags of stuffing that I usually get at Walmart. So here are my pencil cases. I mean, I have a lot more styles. This is just to give you an idea. This is what the backs look like. Okay, here are my large prints. So I just have a couple of them out here. Um, yeah, they are printed on glossy cardstock. So they're, I don't know how to, they're very thick. A hundred uh, pound, hundred pound, I think that's what they are, hundred pound paper. They're slightly glossy, but not too much. Yeah. Um, they're very nice quality. Uh, I guess I can zoom in. They're very nice and crisp. There you go. Then I have my postcard sizes here. So these are four by six. Um, they're just blank on the back. Just little prints that people can frame if they want. Then I have my large stickers. These are vinyl. They are all cut out like this one is. This one just has the white paper removed, but they are all kiss cut stickers. And here are my magnets. Yeah, so they have a backing like this. They're very strong, as you can see. Very strong magnets. I chose these ones because they're strong and I just personally hate these little flimsy magnets that you can't stick anything up with. Um, yeah, so I have, I use my button maker to make magnets and buttons. And that's it. So if you don't know what to sell, I have wrote down a few ideas that I'll share with you guys. So play mats, mouse pads, keychains, jewelry, washi tape, pins, greeting cards, charms, stickers, bags, plushies, apparel, mugs, buttons, magnets. There are tons of stuff to choose from, so that's something that you can research when you attend your first expo as a guest. I see what you did there. So number five is to make your items. Some places will take a month or more to produce your items, so make sure you contact your manufacturer and find out what your deadline will be. Make sure you don't wait to the last minute. I think that is something that most artists do, but try to fight the procrastination. I got so much time right now, I'm totally gonna have like a million art pieces. I mean, I can probably get like a few art pieces done. <laughs> I have nothing to sell. Make sure you always get test prints made because uh, the colors always come out differently than they do, say, if you print it at home. Every printer is completely different, um, so no matter what it is, make sure you get a test print. I would recommend trying to use local printers, and that is because they are easier to get test prints. You can just drive on over there, uh, check out your test print, you can adjust the colors, maybe test print it again. Um, a lot of times they're Prices are a lot cheaper than online stores. You don't have to pay for shipping costs and you don't have to waste time by waiting for the products to get to you. And they often price match too. So shop around, get tons of quotes and test prints at different printers. Uh, choose the one you like the best and then ask if they will print it for the cheapest price that you got quoted. 
So the printer that I use is Rayacom, and um, I live in Kelowna, Canada, so that might not be everywhere, especially you live in, if you live in the United States. But I know they do have an office in Edmonton and Saskatoon and possibly Vancouver and Calgary. Oh my gosh, I'm so thirsty. Ugh, so much better. So number six is packaging. Now that you figured out what you're selling, you can figure out how to package it. Packaging really helps to give your products a more professional feel. It also helps to keep your items like new. If you're gonna be selling prints, make sure you get sleeves because there is nothing worse than getting a print at an expo and the artist is out of sleeves. I mean, it happens, but definitely order extras. I get all my packaging and shipping supplies from clearbags.ca. I know they also have a US site. So here are some of the products that I got from clearbags.ca. So I have uh, this size sleeve, this one's for my four by sixes, and my 11 by 14s. Uh, and I do have all these versions in the type that has a flap. So this is the type that has a little, oops, little flap. You just uh, peel this off and flip it over and it just seals it. Um, but the, time, the type I bring with me to expos is usually the ones that are, they're just open. I don't think they... They're just open on one side and that just makes it easier for packaging while I'm at the expo. And then I have some mailers here. Um, I believe these are 8x10s and these are, I'm not sure, 12 by 16 maybe? And some envelopes. These are 4 by 6 because I sell greeting cards once in a while. I don't right now, but I plan to in the future. So number seven is branding. It is definitely important to start thinking about what you want your brand to say. So make sure that your branding matches each other and also make sure that it matches your artwork. That is one of the biggest mistakes that I see artists making. It's just really hard to remember who everyone is at the end of the day when you have a big stack of business cards. So you just want to make it really easy for them to remember. Maybe put, put some of your artwork on the business card. I totally knew that. And if you have no idea what to do for branding, just keep it clean and simple. Clean and simple is best. This video is getting awfully long. I think it's time for a cat break. So number eight is pricing. So this is something that you can research at your first expo that you attend as a guest. But I will show you what some of my prices are. I like to think that my prices are kind of middle of the range. Um, it's definitely not on the bottom and it's definitely not what the top tier artists are selling for. This is my current sign. Feel free to pause it if you're interested. I have found a lot of success in having some kind of deal. It's an excellent way to upsell more of your products and people love saving money. So number nine is what to bring. So I will just insert a clip here on all of the essentials that I bring with me to expos. So I'm gonna try to make this quick because this tutorial is getting long. I usually keep all of this stuff in a three drawer plastic system that I bring with me and it keeps things so nice and organized. It's awesome. So bring lots of pens with you. Um, I bring all different kinds. Uh, definitely make sure you bring a few different colors of Sharpies for signing prints. So I keep a box of pins with me, uh, all different kinds of pins for pinning up fabric items. Elastic bands, binder clips for pinning up prints and other various things. A sign to let people know you take Interact or credit. These foldable stands are good for putting prints on or other merchandise and they fold flat. 
I always keep a notebook with me for ideas and post-its. Measuring tape has come in handy when I'm trying to plan out a layout of a booth. I keep lots of batteries with me because there is not always power at the events. So I bring a battery powered light and some other things that need batteries. Baby wipes because you want to avoid the con flu. <laughs> Stay healthy. You're dealing with money, shaking customers hands, etc. So you want to make sure you have these to wash your hands or clean up spills. Windex wipes for wiping off frames or signs. Band-aids. I have cut myself pretty bad at an expo and these come in handy. Definitely bring some. Toilet paper because they run out more than you would think and you don't want to have to wipe your butt with your prints. Twine or some kind of other string for tying up banners or tying up really bad customers. I use zip ties for tying up my banners and also the excessively bad customers. Tape for every situation. I uh, use duct tape to fix stuff, uh, packing tape for uh, taping up my prints, and blue tape is good if you want to tape something that you don't want to damage it. Scissors for freeing your customers when they threaten to sue you. All right, so I'll also insert another clip on all of the products that I bring with me to Expos and the types of storage containers that I use. So we'll start here. This bin is awesome. Um, I got it on Amazon. This is an art bin and it is a four by six photo holder. I can't remember exactly what it was called. And I use this to hold all my small prints. So these, all these prints are four by six size. And yeah, I just file everything away here. Um, I guess I'll just show you some of my prints quickly. <laughs> so yeah, I keep um, a bunch of sleeves in the back here, along with some extra dividers and I just decided to stand the dividers up like this because it's easier to flip through for me at expos. And here I have some stickers. Uh, these are the large stickers and they are in they're four by five. Yeah. Four by five. They're vinyl stickers. Then I have these little guys. They are two and a half, two by two and a half or something like that. Two by three, I don't really remember. Here are my pillowcases. So um, yeah, I'm gonna take four bins with me because I can't really take much more than that in my car since I am driving there. Uh, I guess I'll show you one of them. <laughs> This is my Totoro one. So here are my pencil cases. <laughs> yep, say hidden rainbows on the back. I got this, these bins at Staples and they are awesome. They are the, I mean, you can probably get them at lots of different places. They are 42 liters and what the heck is it called? I think it's called like a really useful bin or something. <laughs> Here's a skew for you guys to look up. Um, I, yeah, I got this at Staples. It's called a really useful box. <laughs> okay. So what I love about these bins is it holds my 11 by 14 prints perfectly. And you can get these little dividers for them. So these are the folders that I got. They are the legal 2 inch two inch two inch expansion folders so yeah i got these from staples too they need to be the ones that have this extra expandable bit and then you just don't expand it see i just left it flat 
All right, so the other stuff that I bring, I have all my banners. I have a bunch of different banners. I have vertical hanging banners and horizontal, um, just depending on what setup I have. Uh, these are my signs. These are handy little plaque things. They can, they're like slanted on the table like this, or you can also stand them up. I would have to switch the sign obviously, but you can also stand them up to be like that. I showed these earlier. These are my print sleeves. Um, these come in handy with my display unit that I have. I use these to hang my pillowcases on and it works quite good. Um, then you'll also need a cash box. So I have two. This is my really old one. It's my like super ghetto one, but it does the trick nicely. Uh, yeah, so cash. Make sure you bring lots of cash. Uh, yeah, the, this is my Canadian money, but you need, uh, well, I guess it depends on your prices, but I keep everything rounded to dollars. So I just need five dollars, toonies and loonies. Here's my square reader. So here are my business cards. They're just glossy on the front. This is the back. Here are my buttons. So I do like to have a little button container that I can just put on the table. It's just easier that way. Um, I'm gonna be switching to a bigger one. This one is smaller once I get more buttons, but here's a look at some of my buttons. Uh, this is a nice bin too. It's actually basically this print box, but half the size. So this, I really like this one as well. It would hold four by six prints. Um, it is a super semi satchel, super semi satchel. <laughs> That's hard to say. Uh, by Recollections. And yeah, I bring this with me if I'm going to be making buttons at the expo, which I do sometimes to save on time. So I bring a stapler for my packaging. Here are some magnets that I have. So button parts. Here is my button maker. And I do bring this with me to cons once in a while. Ideally, I don't want to just because um, it's very heavy and it's very expensive. So I just don't want to get it wrecked or stolen. But yeah, this is what makes my pins and magnets very handy machine. Here is that drawer system I was telling you about. So tablecloths. This is the table skirting so it just has uh, velcro on one side and then you use these clips um, and these clips will depend on the type of table that you have. See, they don't really fit very well on this type of table, so the type of uh, folding tables that I have, these work well for. Here I just keep bags in multiple sizes, because I do sell pillows, so they need big bags. You know, extra tablecloths, I have quite a lot of tablecloths. These are my uh, clips for my grid wall system, so um, those are in my storage area right now. Uh, but I'll just insert a picture here of what it looks like. Um, I got mine at Walmart and they work awesome. I have seen so many people having just the hardest time getting their grid walls apart. Like you need a hammer to be able to get them apart. And uh, this one is really easy to get apart. So um, Walmart and they're really cheap. So <laughs> that's a plus also. I also have these type of clips. Um, they're handy for grid walls, so your your prints just clip into the bottom of them, and these top parts just go in the grid wall, and they work really well. And they save your prints from damage. I always I always bring an extension cord just in case there is power and you can use it. Sometimes there's free power at events. So definitely cash in on that. Um, like I said, I bring a light with me. That's my battery powered light, just in case. 
Oh yeah, and I always bring my camera supplies, so I bring this little tripod in case I want to record myself doing a speed paint. Um, extra camera batteries. I have two extra batteries um, and an extra memory card, but I'm using that right now because mine filled up. And of course your camera case. I would also recommend trying to have a booth buddy. The expo is so much more fun when you have a friend there and it helps you like be able to go to the bathroom or you can also like leave for a little bit and enjoy the expo. Um, yeah, like you can do it alone. I do it all the time, but my favorite expos are the ones where I have someone to help me. Make sure you also bring food with you because especially if you're doing it alone, you're not going to be able to leave your booth to go buy food. And even if you do have a booth buddy, eating junk food all weekend really makes you like tired and sluggish and you want to be on your A game when you're dealing with customers all day. So I usually bring a cooler of fruits and vegetables so I can just snack throughout the day. Make sure you also get a flat of water because water is so expensive at these events. I'll also just insert another short clip of the type of display system that I bring with me. And this is my display system. So both, I have two of them. They both came in these black bags. So this is what it looks like. Um, it's just a bag. It's got these little pockets on the sides and a bunch of little poles and two of these guys. All right, so here it is, just unfolds like this. You twist these little knobs and this part raises up. So you have two on either side. So I would have another one there and then you just connect across with the little bars that they provide you. And then I just hang my prints off it. So this is called a photography backdrop. Um, I will try to provide links below of all the things that I could find on Amazon. Um, I got this on Amazon and I chose this particular one because it's uh, thicker. It is, you can get some really crappy ones of these. So yes, they might be cheaper, but they're very flimsy and they will just fall over. This one is quite sturdy. Um, I think it was a bit more expensive. I cannot remember how much I paid. I, I feel like it was about 60 bucks. They're 60 bucks each, so it's pretty good. So last but not least, number 10 is transportation. So make sure that everything fits in your vehicle. There is nothing worse than like not being able to cram it in all your stuff in the vehicle like the day before the event. If you're not driving, then make sure you figure out some way of shipping all your items to the hotel or the place you're staying. So try to get yourself some folding dollies. I have two that I bring with me and they have been a lifesaver for me. Um, often the event does supply some flatbed hand trucks that you can use, but there are very few and they are always gone. Right, so here is my folding dolly. So handy. Uh, it just looks like this. This one is by Magna Cart. I chose to get this one because I, I read a lot of reviews on a lot of them and this one seemed to be the best one. I got it from Home Depot, I believe. So here's what it looks like open. It just has a handle that extends up like that. And Yes, I've had it for maybe a couple years now, it's still going strong. I've done many expos with it and yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Definitely get yourself some stackable containers because that just makes uh, loading and unloading so much easier, especially if you're going to be using those foldable dollies. Uh, the more stackable something is, the easier it is to transport. I got these types of bins because they will all stack together. Um, so that I can use a dolly or a hand truck and it's just really easy and simple. I use this because it has a handle, very easy to grab and then all my odds and ends are in this bin. So it's very easy to just 
grab all these bins, use a dolly, and so my setup time is quick and easy. Also make sure you bring a bag or a backpack. You're gonna wanna leave most of your stuff there overnight. Uh, it's totally fine, all the artists do it, and they usually have security patrolling the premises at night. Um, but you're gonna wanna bring things like your, your valuables home with you, like your cash box, maybe some of your art supplies. Wow, who knew selling at an expo would be so complicated? All right, guys, so that's it for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you guys learned a lot from this video. Please subscribe if you want to see more artsy videos like this. Uh, also be on the lookout for a part two on what to do when you're at the expo. I also have a few expo vlogs that you can check out. It might help you to get some ideas and help you to decide which expos you want to attend. Bye!